ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. This is the legend of a man who buried his identity to dedicate his life to the service of humanity and country. It is the story of the origin of the Lone Ranger. Early settlers in the West had to be brave men and women, ready to fight for their lives at any moment. There was danger on every side. There were wild beasts, savage Indians, and the Cavendish Gang. Butch Cavendish headed a pack of outlaws. They struck without warning to steal and kill. Open fire on that wagon train. Wipe them out to their last man. The Cavendish Gang attacked ranches and towns as well as wagon trains. Everyone feared Butch Cavendish. His gang grew rich and powerful. Finally, the Texas Rangers learned where Butch Cavendish and his gang were hiding. Six Texas Rangers guided their horses along a canyon floor to arrest the Cavendish gang. Presently, Captain Reed signaled a halt. Rain in, boys. Oh, 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 oh. We'll wait here until a scout returns. Do you think it was a good idea to send Collins, our guide, on ahead? It was Captain Reed's younger brother who asked the question. The captain explained that Collins, who was not a Texas Ranger, was the only man who knew the country and who could scout ahead for information. Then, while the Texas Rangers waited for the guide's return, the captain said to his younger brother, My wife and son are coming from the east. If something happens to me and you survive, well, I know you'll take care of her and Danny. Right. I'm going to count on you to resign from the Rangers and work that silver mine we staked out. See that my son and his mother get my share. I promise. Here comes Collins, the scout. Oh, 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 city. Uh, what's the word, Collins? Good news, Captain Reed. It's all clear. I scouted the rim on both sides of the canyon and found no sign of the cabin in his outfit. All right, boys, let's go. Get, get up there. Get up. Get up. Come on, come on, come on. Collins, the guide, lagged behind unnoticed by the Texas Rangers, who moved in single file along the floor of the rock strewn canyon. They didn't know that Collins had lied that Butch Cavendish and his killers were waiting in ambush on the rim on both sides of the gap. Here come those rangers, boys, just as Collins told us. Yeah, they are. Now, we can't get down to the floor of the canyon without going a long way back, and it'll be dark in half an hour. So we'll just keep pouring lead into them from up here until we're sure they're dead. Then we won't be taking any chances. Now open fire! The rangers leaped from their saddles and spread out as they returned the fire from both sides of the canyon. Soon, four of the rangers were killed. Captain Dan Reed and his brother, wounded several times, kept fighting side by side. Then the captain fell mortally wounded, and a moment later, his younger brother, the last of the rangers, slumped to the ground. The outlaws waited and watched for any sign of life from the rangers, then rode away, convinced that all six men in Bryant's Gap were dead. Sunset came. Then darkness. That night, an Indian examined the bodies by moonlight. After examining the first five men, he muttered softly, Oh, them dead. Then he came to the sixth man, the younger brother of the captain. And this man lies. The Indian lifted this man tenderly in his strong arms and carried him to a nearby cave where he bathed and dressed the wounds. Then he took a spade from one side of the cave and returned to the canyon where he worked steadily until the dead men had been buried. Returning to the cavern, he sat watching through the remaining hours of the night. Daybreak found the ranger stronger, but by nightfall, the wounds had become infected. The Indian called on all his knowledge to treat the wounded man. He went day and night without rest. It 
was the morning of the fourth day when the ranger opened his eyes. And for the first time, the Indian saw them clear and calm. Are you weak? Me glad. Yes, I... But so weak. You wounded bad. I... I remember an ambush. Isn't that right? Me find you in canyon. Carry you here to cave. It... It's daylight. It morning. Then I... I must have been unconscious all night. It's several days since fight in canyon. Several days. Ah. There, there's something familiar about you. You? You remember? Many year ago, you only boy. You find Indian boy in trouble. You save life, Indian boy. Yes. Your name is Tonto. That right. Years ago, you called me Kimosabi. That right. And you still Kimosabi. It means... Faithful friend. Tonto, there were six of us in that canyon. The others. What about the other rangers? Other ranger. All dead. Dead. Uh. One was my brother. You, only ranger left. You, lone ranger. The lone ranger. Tonto, those killers know me by sight. If they know one man escaped, they'll look for him. And them not know one escape. Tonto bury five men, make six grave. Crook think you die with others. Good. Then my name shall be forever buried with my brother and my friends. From now on, my face must be concealed. A disguise, perhaps, or a mask. That's it. A mask. I'm the only one who knows about the Cavendish gang. With your help, Tonto, I'll get every one of those crooks. In the ranger's eyes, there was a light that must have burned in the eyes of knights in armor. A light that through the ages lifted the souls of strong men who fought for justice, for God. I'll be the Lone Ranger. With the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. This is the legend of a man and a horse, and how they met. The story of the Lone Ranger and his great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were trailing the worst outlaw in the West. His name was Butch Cavendish. They had followed his trail for many weeks, until finally they noticed that the hoof prints of the outlaw's horse were fresh. We're close to Cavendish now. Yes, Tonto, he can't be far ahead. Him outrun us last time. Maybe better we shoot in sight. No, I want to take him alive. That shot. Look out. Steady there, steady boy. Over there. Killer in ambush, him right way. Tonto, he missed me, but he shot my horse. Get after him. Get him up, Tonto! Tonto's horse was tired and no match in speed for the animal Cavendish rode. The outlaw escaped. When Tonto returned from the futile chase, oh, fella. Oh, fella. he found the lone ranger standing beside his dead horse. A good horse, Tonto. Loyal, faithful, and brave. But my next horse must be faster. I wish that... Tonto... We've heard stories of a wild horse, a fiery white stallion. Ah, him seen near Valley over there, where Cavendish go. We'll be on the lookout for the wild horse while we follow Cavendish. Tonto's horse carried the Lone Ranger's saddle, his saddlebags and bridle, while the masked man and the Indian continued on foot along the outlaw's trail. 
When they reached the top of a hill... Look, Toto. They halted suddenly and stared at an awe-inspiring sight far down in the valley. They saw a great white stallion in a death fight with a giant buffalo. The horse was plunging, rearing, charging, and dodging wildly. And the sun flashed from his coat as from a coat of polished silver. They realized that this was the legendary white stallion, the one ranchers and hunters had talked so much about. Toto, we must have that horse. I'll try to shoot the buffalo. Get too far for pistol shot. I'll get closer before it's too late. As he ran downhill, the Lone Ranger watched the battle. The sleek white stallion was nimble and courageous, but his strength began to wane. The buffalo charged again and again. The splendid muscles of the white horse were slower in responding, then too slow. He was caught by the buffalo's charge. Wet crimson stained his pure white coat. Another charge. The white horse saw it coming, and he couldn't dodge. He staggered and fell. The monster drew back and lowered his head for the death charge. And then, two shots rang out. The buffalo shuddered from the impact of the masked man's bullets. For an instant, he stood motionless. Then fell. Truly battered and bruised, the white stallion lay quietly as the Lone Ranger bathed his wounds. During the next several days, the masked man and the Indian cared for the injured horse. Then the wounds were closed and the horse's strength had returned. There was once more fire in his eye, a spring in his step, and his head was lifted proudly. Toto, he's himself again. Ah, him plenty strong. Plenty good horse. I wonder if he'll take a saddle. Let's try. Steady there. Steady, boy. Me get rope. Him run away. No, Toto, wait. Let him go. I'd like to have that horse more than anything in the world. But he deserves his freedom. He fought for it. Him stop. He's turned to look at us. See how the sun reflects from his white coat. Ah. Him look like silver. Silver. That would be a name for him. Silver! Look at him. Silver! Hey, Silver! Toto, he's coming back. It's just as if he knew what I said. Silver! Silver, you beauty. Hand me the halter, Toto. As the mighty stallion felt the halter, he trembled as if from a chill. Every instinct told him that he must flee at once to preserve his freedom. And yet he stood his ground. It wasn't gratitude that kept him there. It was something stronger, some mysterious bond of friendship and understanding. He heard the man's voice, and he liked it. Silver. Silver. We're going to be partners. Him let you use halter. Now, Toto, the saddle. Oh, no horse like that. Take saddle. There never was a horse like this. Now, Silver... We're going to work together. The horse was wild and unused to the ways of men and the weight of a saddle and a rider. But the masked man was a kind teacher. He was gentle yet firm, and Silver was intelligent. The stallion seemed to sense the desires of the Lone Ranger and did his best to cooperate. He learned quickly, and after several days of training, he was ready. Follow me, Toto. I'm going after Cavendish. Come on, Silver! No hoofs had ever beat the plains like those thundering hoofs of the great horse, Silver. During the past few days, Cavendish had gotten far away, but the masked man and Toto trailed him relentlessly with only a minimum of rest. It took days to cut down the outlaw's lead, but at long last, Cavendish came into view. There he is. Come on, Silver! The mighty stallion responded with a new burst of speed. Cavendish fired wild shots over his shoulder until his gun was empty. His horse, though powerful and fast, was no match for the charging silver. Get up there. Come on. Fear Get and up. panic filled the outlaw's face. He heard the hoofbeats ever nearer. Get on and then the masked man shout, I want you, Cavendish! The masked man's avowed mission was accomplished. The last of the Cavendish gang was captured to be tried by law and punished for his crimes. But there were many others whose criminal plans were to be challenged by the Lone Ranger, his faithful Indian companion, Toto, and his great horse, Silver. I am Silver! A 
fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Ohio silver, the Lone Ranger. This is the legend of Dan Reed, the story of how the Lone Ranger found his only living relative. A long line of prairie schooners moved westward through a valley. Among the pioneers were families with all their worldly goods and men on horseback who planned to seek their fortune in the new frontier. Also, there were several women who had joined the wagon train to meet their husbands, who had previously gone west to make new homes. Suddenly, a blood-chilling cry rang out from the hills. Indians! Brilliantly painted Indians charged from the hills on both sides of the valley. Form a circle with the wagons! Get to the floor of the wagon, honey, and hold the baby close. Heavily outnumbered by the Indians, the pioneers knew they had no hope, but they were determined to fight to the last man. It was the following morning when the Lone Ranger and Tonto came upon the scene of the massacre. They drew rein and examined the grim remains of wagons that had been looted, then burned, and the bodies of brave pioneers who had died in their attempt to conquer the West. No survivors, Toto. Ah. It looked like work of Apache. This must have been the wagon train that was heading for Fort Laramie. While Toto watched, the masked man made a detailed inspection of the ashes of wagons and their contents. Presently, he found a small square piece of metal, a nameplate from a trunk. He wiped it on his sleeve, then read it. Toto, remember how the Cavendish gang ambushed my brother and the other Texas Rangers in Bryant's Gap? Uh, me no. You ambushed too. I think my brother had an idea that something might happen to him. Just before we rode into the Gap, he called me aside and said, I want to speak to you brother to brother. My wife and son are coming from the east. If something happens to me and you survive, well, I know you'll take care of her and Danny. I promised him I would. Then he said... I'm going to count on you to resign from the Rangers and work that silver mine we staked out. See that my son and his mother get my share. I made arrangements for an old man named Jim to work the silver mine and got enough ore to keep me supplied with silver bullets and what cash I need. Ah, me no. We were to wait until my brother's wife arrived from the east to decide what she wanted done with her share of the silver mine. But now I... Me sorry, Kimasabi. Yes, Toto. Linda and the baby boy were on this wagon train. Maybe woman, baby captured. Maybe them alive. It's a faint hope, Toto. Nevertheless, I shan't be convinced that they're dead. We'll always be on the lookout for some clue that Dan Reed and his mother are alive. In the meantime, we must help make the West a place where massacres like this can't happen. <laughs> After reporting the massacre of the wagon train to Fort Laramie, the Lone Ranger visited his secret silver mine for a fresh supply of silver bullets. Then, with Tonto at his side, the masked man turned the blinding light of justice on criminals throughout the West. He was a mysterious figure identified only by his mask, the great white horse named Silver, and a ringing cry. Are you Silver? He was the Lone Ranger. Though 13 years went by, the Lone Ranger was ever alert for proof that his brother's wife and son were dead, or, if living, a clue that might lead him to their side. Then his adventures took him to the high border country in the Northwest, where he fought men who sought to rob an old lady called Grandma Frisbee and her adopted grandson, a boy in his early teens whose name was Dan. The outlaws were conquered, but the fight had been a great strain on Grandma Frisbee's aging heart. The masked man and Dan were with her in the small, neat bedroom. I... I'm tired. Try to get some sleep, Mrs. Frisbee. No, 
I want to be sure Dan will be all right. I, I want you to take care of Dan. I'll take care of him as if he were my son. You, you ought to know about his past. He's not really my grandson. No, I'm not. But Grandma Frisbee, I Let always... Let me talk. There's a small box under the bed. Hand it to me. I'll get it. Grandma Frisbee held the box in her thin, blue-veined hands while she told of coming west in a wagon train. That was over ten years ago. There was a fine lady traveling with the party, and she had a baby boy. The dying woman told about the Indian attack. I crept away from the scene of the massacre and took the baby with me. I came up here near the border and raised Dan as my grandson. Here's a little gold locket that he wore around his neck. There, there are pictures inside. The Lone Ranger opened the locket and looked at the faces of the man and woman as Dan spoke. I, I wonder who my parents were. I know them. This man, your father, was my brother. Your brother? He was a captain of the Texas Rangers and one of the bravest men in the country. Your mother was a fine lady from Virginia. Her name was Linda. I called the baby Dan because it's the name that's on the locket. But I never knew the last name. Dan's last name is Reed, the same as mine. Gosh! I've been looking for you, Dan, for many years, ever since your father died. From now on, if you're willing, we'll travel together. Oh, I'd like that. Oh, I, I'm glad. Would, would you do just one thing for me before I... I sleep. Would you take off that mask and show me your face? Why, of course. Oh, it's a good face. Yes, a good face. Dan, your grandma was a fine woman. It's too bad she had to go. She was certainly good to me. She and your father left you a great heritage. A heritage? Yes. They and others like them have handed down to you the right to worship as you choose and the right to work and profit from your enterprise. They have given you a land where there is true freedom, true equality of opportunity, a nation that is governed by the people, by laws that are best for the greatest number. Your duty, Dan, is to preserve that heritage and strengthen it. That is the heritage and duty of every American. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. This is the legend of the Lone Ranger and the Colonel's son. When the Lone Ranger and Toto heard Indian war drums, they followed the sound until they reached the top of a hill. In the valley below, they could see a renegade Indian named Crazy Wolf and 200 painted savages. Bushes concealed the masked man and Toto from the Indians. Drum say, Indians attack at dawn. The people in Osage must be warned. At the same time, we must get word to Colonel Ames at the fort. We'll split up, Toto. Take this silver bullet to the fort. Colonel Ames will recognize it and know that I sent you. Tell him this is his chance to capture Crazy Wolf. I'll ride through Eagle Pass and warn the people in Osage to be ready for an attack. Easy, steady, big uh, Be ready. Come on, Come on, let's go. Night had gathered and a full moon was rising when the Lone Ranger reached the entrance to Eagle Pass. Between the towering rocky walls, a soldier stood and signaled a halt. Oh, oh boy, steady, easy now. The soldier advanced, holding his rifle, ready to fire. What's the trouble, soldier? Steady, big fella. You're a long way from the fort. I've been scouting. My horse went lame. That's why I must take yours. I... Mist. Yes, but I'm no outlaw, and I'm not a horse thief. No matter who you are, mister, I'm borrowing your horse as an emergency. 
I must locate those Indian war drums. They're in Crazy Wolf's encampment. What? Crazy Wolf? He and his men are in a valley just below the Twin Peaks. They plan to attack Osage at daybreak. I'm on my way through the pass to warn the town. Oh, uh, what's your name, soldier? Sergeant Ames. Ames? Your father's a colonel at the fort. That's why you look familiar to me. You know my father? Uh, yes. And you know he's one of the toughest officers in the army. As his son, I'd have to be a hero before he'd recommend me for a commission as a second lieutenant. You sound bitter. I'm sorry, but I must take your horse to get back to the fort with the news of Crazy Wolf. My Indian friend Tonto is on his way to the fort now with the information. Tonto? And you... you called your horse Silver. Why, you must be the Lone Ranger. Yes. My father has often spoken of you. Tell me, won't the Indians reach Osage ahead of the troopers? Probably. That's why I must warn the people. They must be ready to make a stand. Maybe I can delay the Indians. Single-handed? I have plenty of ammunition, and there's a natural fortification on the ledge overlooking this gap. I'll open fire before the Redskins reach the pass. I'll get some of them. Unless you're very fortunate, it will mean your life. But you may save many others. Good luck. Easy, steady, big fella, easy. One, After the Lone Ranger had gone, Sergeant Ames climbed to the top of the cliff at the entrance to Eagle Pass and waited until three o'clock in the morning. Then the savages appeared. They came out of the hills riding hard toward the canyon that would take them straight to Osage. Unless they're stopped, they'll kill the Lone Ranger and everyone in Osage. They'll kill the Lone Ranger. I must slow them down. Must One man down. against 200 Indians. The soldier knew he could not last long against such odds, even though he was in a well-fortified place. He leveled his rifle, aimed at Crazy Wolf, and fired. I dropped him! After shooting Crazy Wolf, the Indian leader, Lance Ames kept firing from the ledge as fast as he could load and pull the trigger. Several Indians fell. The others didn't know that just one man guarded the narrow entrance to Eagle Pass. Instead of entering the pass, they turned their horses aside, leaped to the ground, and took shelter behind rocks. Ames knew that every moment he could delay the Indians added to the hope that his father, the colonel, would arrive with troops in time to save the town of Osage and the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger had warned the people in Osage and was on his way back through Eagle Pass when he heard the gunfire. He urged Silver to top speed. Come on, Silver! Faster, big fellow, faster! When he rounded a turn in the canyon, he could see the opening ahead. He drew rein. Oh, Silver, oh, easy, steady, big fellow. The masked man saw Sergeant Ames making his brave fight against the heavy odds. Leaving Silver, the Lone Ranger climbed the rocky wall to the canyon's rim. As he ran, crouching low towards Sergeant Ames, he saw the soldier drop his gun and slump to the ground. He drew his guns and opened fire at the Indian. <laughs> Then he picked up the army rifle, loaded it, and fired some more. The Lone Ranger was able, between shots, to learn that Sergeant Ames was still alive. When the supply of ammunition ran low, the masked man fired more cautiously. After what seemed an eternity, a bugle sounded in the background of the gunfire. The Lone Ranger looked across the plain. He breathed a prayer of thanks at what he saw in the bright moonlight. The soldiers were coming out of the hills from behind the Indians in a column of twos with Tonto riding beside the colonel in the lead. While the masked man watched, the troopers changed formation. Some turned to the right, others to the left. They fanned out to a wide front as the bugle sounded charge. Many of the renegades were cut down by withering gunfire. The others, realizing that it was a hopeless fight, surrendered. While the soldiers were making prisoners of the Indians, the Lone Ranger quickly examined the sergeant's wound, then quietly hurried along the canyon rim and down the wall to the place where Silver waited. He mounted and rode to the mouth of the canyon, where Tonto stood with Colonel Ames. Oh, Silver, oh, oh, easy, steady, big fella. The colonel shook hands with the masked man and said, Thanks to the timely information you sent by Tonto, we have rounded up every one of these renegades. I'm glad to hear it, Colonel. Oh, uh, what about Crazy Wolf? He's dead. Apparently he was shot by someone stationed on that ledge above. Him say people are Osage. Oh, is that so? Indeed it is. He made a glorious stand. He held these Indians out of Eagle Pass till we got here. Hey, Colonel! Hit man on ledge. Men I sent to see who fought these Indians. Yes, he's someone there. It's your own son, Colonel. It's the sergeant. Wait, my son. He's wounded, but it's not serious. His heroic stand should win him a commission and a medal for bravery. Yes, 
Yes, I think you're right. Otto, we better ride through Eagle Pass and tell the people in Osage that Crazy Wolf will not attack. Ah, and that good news. Many thanks to both of you. We'll meet again, Colonel. Easy said it. Let's go, easy fella. Monsilve! Let's go! Well, Colonel Ames, it looks like your son is the man of the hour. He was called a hero, Captain. Called a hero by the Lone Ranger. <laughs> 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 